Are you expecting kittens? If so, then keep on watching because in today's video I'm going to be showing you the exact at home birthing kit that I put together to prepare for all of my cat's births to kittens. So let's get started. The very first thing I prepare for my queen close to the delivery date is a nest. A nest can be made out of something as simple as a cardboard box or the bottom of a cat carrier. However, I personally like to use these pet tents as they are easy to clean, breathable for the queen, and accessible while also providing enough privacy. Now this isn't the exact birthing room that I use for the birth of the kittens, however for the purpose of this video I wanted to show you how I build out my nest for my queen so that she's extremely comfortable. So what I usually do is line the bottom with plastic garbage bags or any piece of plastic will do and then I use these pads which are actually puppy training pads. You can literally just find them at the dollar store or on Amazon but I like to put these over top. I like to make it super absorbent so that a few hours after the birth I can just clean it all up, throw it in the garbage and lay down some warm cotton blankets to keep the babies warm. Most of the warmth should be provided by the queen, however I still like to ensure it is warm enough for those times when she takes a break, so I like to line a soft blanket at the bottom of the nest and then add a baby receiving blanket on top as these are warm yet easy for the babies to move around. It's important not to use materials like terry cloth or towels as kittens nails can easily get stuck to these and while you might be able to help them while you're awake, it could be an issue while you're sleeping. So the second thing you're gonna need is garbage bags. So this is pretty much self-explanatory. I use a big garbage bag to dispose of any soiled or dirty pads, and a small garbage bag is always handy in the unfortunate event of any stillborns. Next is multiple pairs of medical gloves. I prefer to use latex free, but this just prevents any bacteria from spreading to the baby should you need to intervene and help your queen with the umbilical cords. Next is thread or unflavored floss. Now this is for tying off the umbilical cords should the queen not cut them herself with her teeth. You may also require a pair of blunt tip scissors as well, so just keep that handy as well as some rubbing alcohol to wipe and disinfect the scissors if needed. So the next thing you're going to need is an umbilical cord antiseptic or disinfectant. So the one I like to use is this Russian brand, it's also called Brilliant Green Antiseptic, but you can also use 2% tincture of iodine or diluted chlorhexidine to disinfect the umbilical cords, which I also like to apply using Q-tips. So the next thing you're going to want to have handy is a rectal thermometer or a digital thermometer. So this is handy to check temperature before birth. Some queen's temperature may indicate approaching delivery, though it can be unreliable. It's also helpful to check after the birth if there's any unusual signs resulting in an increase in temperature. You'll also want to have some tissues or some small hand towels handy. I use the tissues to help clean and dry baby's airways, including the nose and inside the mouth. I like to use the small towels to perform a slow swinging technique to ensure no fluids remain in the baby's lungs and to further dry them off. Also, some petroleum jelly or Vaseline. This is useful to lubricate the thermometer as well as to lubricate the queen's genitals should the labor between each kitten be long. Also, don't forget about a scale. This is important to weigh the kittens when they are born so that you can observe their weight gain day by day. Lastly, you really want to have something like a notepad or a phone handy where you can track exactly the time that your queen starts going into labor as well as how far apart each kitten is born. And also emergency contacts. I think that this is sometimes overlooked because we believe that cats never really have complications, but you never know and it's good to have those contacts readily available in your phone. Should they go into labor in the middle of the night, you might need to go to an emergency hospital. So having that address and contact information handy is really helpful. Now there's definitely a lot of other things to take into consideration, such as the temperature in the room, the humidity, as well as getting proper care for the queen after birth and making sure she has fish food and water but these are all things that I'll probably cover in another video now if you like this video don't forget to like and also leave a comment below I would love to hear is your cat expecting kittens or have you had kittens in the past and if so what did you do to prepare for the birth of kittens I would love to hear also don't forget to subscribe because I put out weekly cat videos to help you understand and strengthen your connection with cats and kittens and until next time stay positive bye